10 plus years ago, multiple people won a million dollars by playing a baseball video game. And it was a desperate attempt to keep a dying series alive that not even a magic cornfield could bring back. But wait, let's go back. 2K Sports. When you hear that, a lot of things come to mind. NBA 2K, WWE 2K, and monetizable haircuts. But they also had a baseball series at one point. MLB 2K. Now, MLB 2K started off as Sega sports games way back in the ancient decade of the 90s on the Sega Genesis. And throughout the years, these games were well received for the most part. To make a long story short, Sonic getting hit and losing all of his rings was the perfect descriptor of what was happening to Sega. They were bleeding money. And this led to them not only dropping out of the console market, but eventually selling off their sports titles and developers to Take-Two Interactive, who would eventually create the 2K label for these games. Now, after some years, EA bought the exclusive license for the NFL games. Why am I presenting this seemingly random fact? Well, this meant that 2K could no longer develop their very popular NFL games, a blow that's still being felt to this very day. Now, 2K, acting like a petty female Degrassi character, bought the exclusive license to the MLB games in response. So this meant EA's very popular MVP baseball series joined the same grave as NFL 2K. We lost two beloved series because of one company being greedy and the other trying to get back at them. But the difference is 2K's rash decision led them to millions of dollars being lost. The MLB 2K series was okay, nothing really all that special. It's fairly obvious the games were having a drop off in quality. And the glitches, my god, the glitches. Putting on a camcorder and recording a replay that showed off some kind of glitch was a damn YouTube subgenre 15 years ago. I mean, look at some of this stuff. Come on, there's the ball. Come on. Pick it. Oh, you just kicked it. Oh. Oh, it's still there. It's still there, guy. You can. What are you doing? Can you just pick it up already? Wait, what? A barrel roll? What the fuck is that? Oh, the center fielder's gonna come help. Oh, there he goes. But what does he do? He goes and does his own barrel roll. What the fuck is this game? Okay, Jeter, why don't you just step on home plate for us? Or not, you could just barrel over Mark Teixeira. Oh, and watch A-Rod in the background. Watch A-Rod. There he is. What the fuck? <laughs> ah, the good old days. They were so much more low resolution. Probably the most famous glitch, which was actually a cheat, was being able to scale the green monster to rob a home run. For those that don't know, the green monster is 37 feet high. Only Gohan should be able to rob that shit. But remember the exclusive license agreement 2K made with the MLB earlier? Well, there's one little caveat. And when I say one little caveat, I mean it's Grand Canyon sized. While the exclusive license didn't allow the likes of EA to make baseball games, console manufacturers can. Nintendo attempted to make a baseball game, but failed. Microsoft's baseball series was short lived. Sony, on the other hand, had MLB The Show. This, along with the diminishing quality of the 2K series, led to the sales starting to falter. Now, normally you could just ride the wave like Madden can, but Madden was the only NFL game. You didn't really have any other option. While MLB 2K isn't the only MLB game, during the seventh console generation, the MLB The Show series was picking up some steam. Since those games were exclusive to PlayStation, 2K games on PS3 sold terribly. Let's also recognize that 2K is paying for these MLB rights, and there's just no profit here. So to counteract this, they do stuff like partnering with Nickelodeon to make a low effort, quite frankly, horrifying looking MLB game. They would make a bargain bin stickball game, and they would make MLB Mario Party? The hell is this? Don't worry, we'll talk about this someday. 
And 2K would go as far as to do these little combo packs where they would try and bundle MLB 2K with the much more popular and well-received NBA 2K just to sell some games. This is like Santa leaving you the gift you've always wanted, but then leaving something really, really corny to even it out, like scented candles or some shit. But none of this is as big as MLB 2K's most famous or infamous promotion, the Million Dollar Perfect Game Challenge. Be the first to pitch a perfect game in Major League Baseball 2K10, and you can win a million dollars. Seriously, that's a whole lot of cheese. And I'm going deep. Now this challenge was for MLB 2K10. If you were the first to throw a perfect game, you win the contest. A perfect game in baseball being to get 27 straight outs without allowing a single base runner. It's one of the rarest things that can be done in the sport. Now, how does this whole contest work? Well, you have to point a damn camcorder at the TV like DSP. This sucks my ass! You would have to start recording before the TV is even turned on. You can't substitute players, and you can't even pause the game to use the bathroom, so you better have a bottle strapped to your leg. After recording, you have to burn the footage onto a DVD and send it into 2K for review. Now remember, this is 2010. Not many people have recording options and a capability to burn DVDs. This convolutedness limits the amount of players, but considering every entry is reviewed by an actual person, the odds of cheating are low. Since entries are submitted to 2K, it's rare to come across challenge attempts on YouTube. I only found some. Wow! Unfucking believable! This clip was from MLB 2K12, but whatever. So this contest would rage on for about 90 minutes. Wade McGilberry of Alabama would go home with the $1 million and he only did it on his sixth attempt. The contest went on much shorter than anticipated, but it did get the game a lot of press. I mean, there were articles on NBC, ESPN, CNN, and a bunch of sites that look like they haven't been touched in God knows how long. I mean, look at this place. One thing to notice in these articles is the date, all of them in May. But wait. MLB 2K released in March, and everyone claims that he won the contest in about 90 minutes. So what's with the huge jump in dates? Well, the honest answer is that Wade McGilberry finished too quickly. Pause. You have to remember first and foremost that this whole thing is a promotional tactic. 2K themselves couldn't announce that the contest was over in 90 minutes because that essentially kills all the hype and all of the people buying the game and attempting to win the million dollars. So what they did was just say nothing for two months while the contest was secretly over at this point. 2K will hide behind the excuse that they were just verifying entries, but do you think it took them two months to verify this? I mean, let's be real. But hey, that's just a theory. A game day theory. So the contest was a success, right? The winner, Wade McStrawberry, would be interviewed many times and would even star in a commercial for the next game where he's playing the game and his tailor molests him in order for him to mess up his attempt at the challenge. I'm not making this up. Punch and put on. Dude, I'm gonna win a million dollars. Awkward. Speaking of the next game, MLB 2K11 would return with the perfect game challenge and it would be relatively the same as the last one. This year's challenge would go to high school music teacher Brian Kingry. He said he wants to buy a new fridge with his money. With the amount of money he just won, I couldn't think of a better thing to start with. So get this, Brian didn't even watch baseball or play baseball or play baseball video games or knew anything about the sport. Believe it or not, he would use the almighty power of the Google search engine to find out batter tendencies and the best matchups. Yeah, there was actually a Google commercial about this. There was a mini controversy for this year's challenge, and it's so random that I can't even make it up. Of all people, pro wrestler Steven Richards was in the news for this challenge. A lot of people say he should be the rightful winner. Stevie uploaded a video of himself pitching a no-hitter, and some people picked up on it. I don't know if these articles are just ignorant or purposefully just trying to drum up some kind of drama. But anyone who was somewhat familiar with this contest knows this video isn't contest eligible. The recorded starting in the ninth inning, and he clearly had the game paused. This was also before the start date, and it wasn't even sent in. Stevie just said he wanted to show off his perfect game accomplishment, not to win the contest. Man, Stevie should have the right to censor these dumb articles. So with all of these articles, commercials, and everything, you would think this contest is a big hit that's skyrocketing in the game, right? Well, no. 
The game saw no improvement in sales. On the contrary, they got even worse. While the MLB The Show sales were on the rise, despite being only on one console, this led to many speculation about the future of the series. MLB 2K12 would release with a new twist on a challenge, and this would lead to the huge controversy. Like I mentioned earlier, you had to send in your submission in order to be eligible. A human would have to sit there and review it. Cheating was slim, but for 2K12, they just decided to let the game itself handle things. You enter the challenge, and instead of the first person to pitch a perfect game, you get a score after you pitch one. The score is determined by the team you use, the team you face, how many strikeouts, etc. The top eight scores will be sent into the MLB Fan Cave in order to participate in the tournament that would be broadcast on TV. There's just one problem with this. Cheat, 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 cheat. Yeah, there was cheating. Of course there was. That's like if I asked that the sun was going to come up tomorrow. Like all good virtual beef, this one starts on internet forums. 2K forums, if you want to be exact. Steve Young met William Haft and started to exchange text messages. Haft would inform Young of an exploit in a game where you can essentially take out the best players of the opposing team thus making this challenge significantly easier. Such a thing should be against the rules, but it's kinda ambiguous. It's not stated on 2K's official rule list, but the challenge is run through MLB 2K's MLB Today feature, which is supposed to feature the current up-to-date lineups. Even when a 2K admin was being asked about this, he said it was illegal. Let me tell you, this intern does not get paid enough for this. Haft and Hill continue to exchange, quite frankly, these terrible texts. I mean, this guy doesn't deserve the 1 million, not because he cheated, but because he writes like English is his 10th language. Young felt like he was being cheated out of a final spot, so he would eventually bring all of this to light to, of all places, Kotaku, which is how I got this info. Unfortunately, everything I just said about this situation is meaningless because William Haft would be one of the eight finalists. Like I mentioned earlier, the eight finalists would play in a tournament at the MLB Fan Cave in New York. This whole thing was recorded, then aired on Spike TV, and it was hosted by the Dorito guy. Watching this is kinda a throwback to those days of Madden Nation. <laughs> Just with a lot less personality. What would you have done with the million dollars if you won? You know, I said this throughout all the interviews and I'll stick with it now. I would have bought a helicopter with some spinner rims and two rotors on top. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Now, I'm not into top level MLB 2K play or if such a thing even exists. But it seems just because you can throw a perfect game doesn't mean you're good at the actual game. These guys are swinging at junk pitches, missing pitches down the middle, and doing dumb stuff like throwing the ball to third base while the only base runner is stealing second. And Teixeira is going for second. Safe. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe it has to do with this god-awful angle they're playing at. What the hell is this? Yeah, I'd suck too if I had to play with the TV at a 45 degree angle. Reminds me of when they show a WWE wrestler watching TV backstage. Eventually, Christopher Gilmore would win the $1 million, and more importantly, he got to take a picture with Kate Upton. William Haft was eliminated and wasn't even featured in this show. Don't know if that was coincidence or not. Now, it was heavily doubtful we would get another MLB 2K game and another 2K challenge. Just a mere two months before release, we would get an announcement that well, the game exists. It was a hastily thrown together last minute game and it was very obvious. You know how people say sports games are more often than not just the same game every year with just updated rosters? Yeah, this is exactly what 2K was. Literally, nothing new at all. The writing was on the wall for this series, but we would get one more $1 million perfect game challenge, which was completely different. The goal here was to split up the $1 million prize pool so there would be more winners. It is extremely hard to find info on this year's challenge. Our old friend Steve Young won $25,000 and his nemesis William Half won $25,000 as well, at least according to this Kotaku article. The $250,000 prize would go to Justin Chavaria, and with that, the MLB 2K challenge was done. 
2K would announce that they would discontinue their MLB franchise, leaving 2K Sports with just NBA and WWE for the time being. With the death of MLB 2K, Xbox systems would go without a baseball game for seven years until MLB The Show was made multi-platform. The 2K Million Dollar Challenge did have some impact. It led to the MLB The Show series implementing their own challenge contest called Challenge of the Week which yours truly won a couple times, not to brag or anything. Of course, I'm just saying. But if you can believe it, the 2K Million Dollar Challenge would return in WWE 2K19. It was the WWE 2K Million Dollar Tower. You would have to run a gauntlet of 15 wrestlers, with the final wrestler being AJ Styles, who just collected all seven of the Chaos Emeralds. After beating the tower, you have to cut a promo and send it into 2K and hope it gets selected. Now let me tell you about these promo videos. Search up WWE 2K19 Million Dollar Promo to go down a Bugs Bunny-esque rabbit hole. So many of these entries with so little views and so much gold in them. I mean, these dudes were trying their best. AJ Styles, you think your million dollar challenge tower was a challenge? What's with all the, the steam, like bro? You left the baby. shower running? Hope you got the message, AJ. This is what the big dogs play. Triple A coming your way. And I'm walking away the one million dollar. See you soon, AJ. I'm coming for you. I'm giving you a shout out. I don't care how you sound or how fat you are. <laughs> Thanks, that means a lot. Stefan Benson would go on to the finals to play against AJ Styles, who looked like he'd never even played this game before. Woo! Oh, wait, come on, man. I was in the ropes. To win the grand prize. But there was some controversy here, too. There's speculation that this contest was rigged based on the fact that people noticed that this guy actually worked for the WWE at one point. And supposedly, if you searched up his gamer tag, he only had two achievements for WWE 2K19. Something rigged in pro wrestling? Who would have thought? The MLB 2K Perfect Game Challenge was just a desperate attempt to keep a series alive and get some buzz surrounding it. It was the most inferior game in the market by far. And instead of improving their game so they don't do stuff like this, they add in this hokey challenge that didn't really benefit anyone at all. Just goes to show, you can give away money, put people on TV, have fancy news coverage, and have people take pictures with Kate Upton. It won't matter if your game still sucks.